Before the world knew of its existence, it was already legend, the SR-71 Blackbird. It is a reconnaissance aircraft, a seeker of truth, that is without peer or rival. Shrouded under a veil of mystery and intrigue, the SR-71 is the fastest, highest flying aircraft in the world. These blackbirds can literally outrace a bullet, cross the length of a football field in the blink of an eye, or pass from Washington, D.C., Los Angeles in under an hour. With its twin power plants each developing more thrust than the engines on board the Queen Mary, the SR begins its climb to the edge of space, where it will reach speeds in excess of three times the speed of sound. Yet perhaps the most significant fact of all about these incredible flying machines is that they are now more than two decades old, but have lost nothing to age. Like its predecessor, the U-2, the SR-71 evolved from a need, a need to know. In the late 1950s and early 60s, Gaining accurate reconnaissance data on massive foreign military buildups was imperative to the defense of the United States and its allies. The entire balance of global power was at stake. The problem was how to do it in the face of a mounting missile threat. The answer turned out to be revolutionary. Behind an almost unprecedented curtain of secrecy at the Lockheed California Company's Skunk Works, legendary aircraft designer Kelly Johnson and a small team of dedicated engineers and craftsmen began to shape aviation history. Beginning with their success with the P-38 during World War II, followed by the F-80 shooting star, America's first production jet fighter in the mid-40s. Then the F-104, the world's first Mach II fighter in the 50s, and the U-2 during the Cold War years. Johnson's team had consistently gone beyond what was then thought possible. With the creation of the Blackbird, though, even their lofty reputation would be taxed to the limit. Nearly everything that went into its construction had never been done before. Titanium forgings that had to withstand temperatures of over 600 degrees. The hydraulic system. The engines. Fuel. A life support system befitting a space traveler. emergency escape requirements that could operate at altitudes above 100,000 feet. Everything from its tires to the top of the canopy to even the technology from which the pieces and components were built was invented there and then, not copied or borrowed from something previously done. Of equal significance to the creation of the aircraft itself is the fact that the entire accomplishment was conducted in just 22 months. Unprecedented then, unimaginable today. As the initial Blackbird went through final assembly at a remote test site, its existence was still only known to a few select people. 
the public recognition it would later receive as a national asset was still years off. On April 26, 1962, Blackbird No. 1 successfully completed its first flight. Quickly moving through a natural progression process, many versions of the new aircraft were tested, including one model, the YF-12, which successfully demonstrated its ability as a missile launcher. Soon, though, national security brought its brief evolution to what we have today a strategic reconnaissance aircraft, unparalleled for purpose and design. In early 1970, several years after President Lyndon Johnson first announced their existence, the Blackbirds hinted at their potential by setting seven world speed and altitude records, which still stand. Even more fascinating, perhaps, is the knowledge that those same aircraft are capable tomorrow of going out and breaking every record they now hold. In full service since 1966, today's Blackbirds are members of SAC's 9th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing at Beale Air Force Base in California. Though the times have changed, their mission has remained the same. Every time an SR-71 flies, it is an operation that involves many highly skilled people. Yet, the successful execution of a flight comes down to just two men. The reconnaissance systems officer who monitors the SR-71's vast array of advanced mission equipment. And the pilot who guides its course. They belong to an elite fraternity open to only a select few. Following a refueling stop to top off its tanks, the SR-71's twin turbo ramjet engines will produce more power than 45 diesel locomotives as it ascends to the upper reaches of the stratosphere. Cruising at speeds in excess of 2,000 miles an hour at altitudes above 80,000 feet, an SR-71 can survey 100,000 square miles every 60 minutes. It's multiple sensors gathering in millions of bits of information with each pass. Yet, for all of the SR-71's power and command of the sky, it remains an instrument of peace. It sorts the difference between what others say and what they do. And because its missions are still highly classified, the SR also remains today, over 20 years after its birth, a complete enigma, a mystery. And what many believe is the finest aircraft ever built. <laughs> 